It's been nearly three years since the launch of the Steam Deck, and with it, SteamOS 3.0. It was a watershed moment for both gaming handhelds and Linux gaming alike, helping define what handheld PC gaming should look like. But while the gaming hardware has definitely progressed, there's one major gotcha that almost all gaming handhelds still suffer with. Windows. That may be about to change. Today we're going to take a look at Bazite, which is both a Windows and a SteamOS replacement, and promises to deliver the best of both worlds. Best of all, it works on just about every PC and gaming handheld that's out there. So whether you're a handheld enthusiast or a Linux gaming nut, buckle up, this one's going to get good. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Nearly every gaming handheld that I review includes a caveat. The hardware is fantastic, but Windows is an absolute pain to manage on such a small device. If the Steam Deck has taught us anything, it's that Windows is not the requirement that it once was, and gaming on Linux is not only viable, but likely the best option for gaming handhelds. There's only one problem though, SteamOS so far has only officially been released on the Steam Deck. And while there are rumors circulating that Valve might be bringing more devices into the fold, those are just rumors at this point. There are SteamOS alternatives you can install, like Chimera and Hollow ISO, but those have been lacking some of the hardware integration that makes SteamOS so seamless. That is, until today. Today we're going to be taking a look at Bazite, the self-proclaimed next generation of Linux gaming, and it promises to deliver the smooth navigation of SteamOS alongside the hardware configurability that we've come to expect out of Windows-powered devices. Things like TDP configuration, hotkey customization, and even RGB lighting control. For those new to SteamOS and Linux gaming, I've actually done a number of videos on the subject before, laying out the full history of SteamOS and how it came to be. I'll make sure to link those down in the video description. But in short, SteamOS is an Arch Linux-based OS built by Valve. As of right now, the only official version is for the Steam Deck, Valve's homegrown handheld gaming PC. SteamOS itself is fairly bare bones, only running the drivers and software needed by the Steam Deck hardware. It boots directly into the Steam Launcher, where you can browse the Steam Store, as well as download and launch games. There are also some very tight hardware integrations included, with menu options for adjusting the power draw of the Ryzen APU, all accessible via a hotkey on the face of the device. It's this navigation and menu system that really makes SteamOS so intuitive to use. If you need to change a hardware function, just tap the button on the right of the screen and make the changes in the menu. For software functions like exiting a game, bringing up chat, or navigating your game library, press the hotkey to the left of the screen. And that's it. There's no Windows control panel. There's no trying to tap on hyperlinks or checkboxes that are too small to hit with your finger. There's no mouse-driven GUIs. SteamOS literally places everything you need to manage and navigate the Steam Deck just a simple button press away. That's not to say it's perfect, though. For starters, while game compatibility is quite good these days, SteamOS is still relying on compatibility plugins like Wine and Proton to make Windows games work on Linux at all. Some games do have some bugs with them that you will need to deal with, and for others, there's a large number of games that rely on anti-cheat applications, which have a near zero shot of working properly. Windows also has greater support for hardware, often with handheld makers including applications to adjust TDP or RGB, though none of them are quite as cleanly integrated as they are in SteamOS. For nearly the last three years, despite being among the weakest hardware platforms on the market, the Steam Deck has continued to sell quite well, mainly due to its outstanding ergonomics and fantastic ease of use. Since the launch of the Steam Deck, there have also been a number of projects trying to build an OS with the benefits of SteamOS, but in a more generic package to support a wider variety of hardware. Chimera OS and Hollow ISO are two such distros. Chimera is still going strong, and on top of being a solid Linux distro in its own right, also brings some added features missing in SteamOS. One of the biggest ones is including alternative game launchers like Lutris, making it easier to load games from outside Steam itself. Not that you can't do that on the Steam Deck, but Chimera already has Lutris installed. While Chimera OS itself has support for the same games library as SteamOS proper, the downside is it's missing the hardware integrations you'd get from running SteamOS on the Steam Deck, or even Windows on the handheld that you just formatted over. There's a single handheld in their hardware support list that allows for TDP adjustments, a pretty vital feature in a gaming handheld unless you ever only use it tethered to a charging brick. So while hardware driver support is overall quite good, Chimera misses the mark when it comes to actual usability. 
So that's the landscape that exists today. In one corner, you've got SteamOS running pretty much flawlessly on the Steam Deck thanks to Valve's vertical integration. In the other corner, you've got every other handheld vendor. Asus, Lenovo, GPD, Ioneo, One X Player, Azoc, all running Windows and all with pretty much the exact same problems that are inherent to it. Bloated first party applications for hardware control that are often glitchy or even self-serving to drive you to first party stores. And underneath it all, you've got an OS that's been designed to be operated with nothing but a keyboard and mouse for the last 35 years. And I don't know if you've noticed, but gaming handhelds don't exactly have those. Well, the GPD WinMax 2 excluded. Now, I've tried just about every Linux alternative to SteamOS that's ever existed, including rolling my own from PopOS and Manjaro. And they all have the exact same problems when it comes to handhelds, and that's the lack of hardware control. So call me a bit skeptical when I heard Bazite was working on yet another SteamOS clone because I've seen this song and dance before. But I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. The installation process is pretty straightforward, but you will need a USB-C hub as you'll need a keyboard and a bootable USB drive connected to your handheld at the same time. The installer menu has a short series of menus for formatting your hard drive, setting up a new user, and even connecting to Wi-Fi. Once that's configured, the install takes around 10 minutes and my handheld booted straight up into Bazite OS. Now, for demonstration purposes today, I've got this running on One X Player's latest One X Fly handheld with the Ryzen 8840U, which they sent over for this review. I've already taken a look at the previous version of this handheld powered by the Ryzen 7840U, and physically, they're absolutely identical. The 8840U is rocking the same RDNA 3-based Radeon 780M APU with 12 compute units, along with LPDDR5 memory running at 7500 megatransfers per second. In fact, the APUs are virtually identical, save for the fact that the 8840U includes an NPU, which was not present for the 7840U. In theory, if games were to take advantage of this for AI processing, there would be an advantage here. But to my knowledge, no developer has actually called for that yet. Booting into Bazite, the first thing I noticed was just how everything kind of worked. I got a startup chime from the speakers, which means I had sound and I was able to adjust it using the rocker switch on the top of the device. The display was at full 1080p resolution. And what's more, it was obviously running at 120 Hertz. Joysticks and buttons were all mapped properly, and even the most unexpected thing was working right out of the box. The hotkeys for bringing up the software menus were working as expected. And that is something I have not seen on any handheld that I've tried any variant of SteamOS on. What's more is the hardware menu includes configuration for TDP adjustments, and I can even configure the RGB all from the same convenient overlay that's present on the Steam Deck. And those features are both missing from every variant of SteamOS that I've tried, and I think they are both vitally important in a gaming handheld. If you've ever used a Steam Deck before, you're gonna be right at home here, as navigation is absolutely identical here in Bazite. Games installed and launched without any issues, and since we're running on the One X Fly, we're on markedly better hardware than on the Steam Deck. But that's not the only good news here. Bazite also includes a number of third-party applications as well, a couple of which even surprised me. If you exit the Steam Launcher and switch over to desktop mode, you'll be greeted by a first run screen that prompts you to install a variety of software that might be handy on a gaming PC, mobile or otherwise. Lutris comes pre-installed, as that's basically a given for Linux gaming these days. But other available apps include EMU Deck for setting up emulators and ROMs, Wadroid, an Android container for running mobile games, and even Sunshine, allowing you to run Bazite as a cloud gaming host and stream to other devices. I'm likely going to take a look at running Bazite on a cloud gaming server VM, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. But it can't be understated just how nice it is to have popular or even critical apps available at the touch of a button like this right out of the box. One of the reasons Windows is so frustrating to use on a handheld device is the interface isn't meant to be driven from a touchscreen cursor or an on-screen keyboard. Even installing game launchers like Steam, GOG Galaxy, or Epic can be an absolute pain, let alone any other software or games that you might want to run from different sources. To be fair though, installing games outside of Steam's fancy walled garden is still a pain even on Bazite. Lutris is an entirely keyboard and mouse driven experience, so you'll want to plug one in anyway if you have GOG offline install libraries that you want to sideload on. But Lutris is pre-installed. It's also easier to get games up and running versus basically every other Linux distro that I've tried. 
Lutritz itself is really just a front-end launcher and still has dependencies that it needs like Proton, Wine, DXVK, and the like. On most other Linux distros, that means not only plugging in a keyboard and a mouse, but going to the terminal to pull down packages from apt or pacman. If you want to talk about things I'd rather not be doing on a handheld, this is pretty much at the top of my list. But Lutris comes pre-installed with all of its dependencies here in Bazite. But since everything was pre-installed, the process was almost painless. Plugging in a micro SD card, it was automatically seen and added to my Seam library. I then copied over some GOG installers to a USB drive and went through the Lutris install wizard to get them all installed onto the micro SD card. Most games automatically pull down icons and graphics, and once installed, you can right click on the titles and add a shortcut to Steam. That way, once you're back inside Steam's friendly launcher, your third-party games will show up alongside your Steam games and work with all of Steam's integrations and overlays. I've wanted SteamOS to succeed for so long. See my very first video I published on SteamOS back in 2018. And it's been so close for so many years, I'd almost given up hope of seeing it on a non-Valve device. To be clear, Bazite is not SteamOS. In fact, Bazite is based on Fedora Atomic Desktop, a completely different flavor to SteamOS's Arch Linux underpinnings. But Bazite is filling a massive need for a competent handheld designed operating system that SteamOS started. Bazite not only brings the best of Linux gaming, with a full host of third-party apps alongside Steam's impressive game launcher, it also delivers hardware support typically only seen inside of Windows. Bazite not only supports the standard Ryzen APUs like the 7840U and the 8840U in the all-new One X Fly that I've got here, but a wide array of mobile and desktop hardware, including AMD Radeon RX 400 series and higher, NVIDIA desktop and mobile GPUs from the 900 series forward, and even Intel Integrated Graphics and Intel Alchemist. Now, not every mobile chipset is going to have TDP adjustments unlocked, but I've installed it on four devices so far, and I am four out of four for having TDP adjustments available in the SteamOS menu. By the way, that's four devices from three different manufacturers, and all of which have different APUs on board. The iNeo Air right here is running the 5520U, a six core Zen 3 based CPU. Uh, we've got the iNeo Kuhn with the 7840U. We have the GPD WinMax 2 running a 6800U. And then we've got the One X Player Fly running the 8840U. For the last three years, as gaming handhelds have exploded in popularity, I've reviewed all manner of new hardware from half a dozen manufacturers. And as good as that hardware has been, there's always been the caveat that they all run Windows. And for every operation outside of gaming, Windows simply sucks on devices like this. And it's for that reason that I keep coming back to the Steam Deck and the friendly confines of SteamOS. It's been a weekly driven device ever since I bought it in February of 2022, despite genuinely loving some newer devices like the One X Fly. But now that Bazite fully supports not only Linux gaming, but the handheld hardware underneath it, the Steam Deck's days might be numbered. And if hardware companies are watching this video right now, I'd seriously consider putting more resources into Bazite to get your hardware officially supported. Heck, maybe even start giving the option of shipping your handhelds with Bazite instead of Windows. I'm sure a number of customers would happily choose a SteamOS-like experience with all of the hardware benefits and none of the Windows headaches. Prime example of why I want to have developers of hardware get on board with Bazite and start providing drivers. Uh, the Ionia Kuhn right here is a fantastic bit of hardware that has some major ergonomic issues and some major software issues inside of Windows. Uh, it's also got some issues inside of Bazite. Uh, for example, while the hotkey does work to bring up the side menu right here, this other key is not mapped properly, nor are the other two hotkeys that are down here. Uh, so the only way I can bring up the second menu is by holding the hotkey and then tapping A, which is the default behavior for the Xbox controller. That's not the biggest deal though. The biggest deal is, these hotkeys around the exterior of the display don't work, nor do the trackpads work, nor are they mappable inside of SteamOS. If you're gonna include the trackpads, I would really like to see this mappable very much like the Steam Deck and the Steam Controller. Last but not least, the sound doesn't work on this handheld. Uh, I didn't realize that for maybe the first 30 minutes of testing because I figured the sound was just turned off, but no, uh, the volume rocker works and it sees a sound device, but there is no sound coming out of this device. 
But overall, I would say out of the four devices that I installed it on, three devices working absolutely perfectly, including TDP adjustment, full resolution screens, and the ability to adjust even your RGB lighting, I will absolutely take that. If you want to give Bazite a try, and I highly recommend you do, I'll have a link for where to download it from down in the video description. As for the One X Fly with the Ryzen 8840U, I do have a full review of the 7840U model also on this channel, and it remains one of my favorite handhelds in the last 18 months. Ergonomics that are second only to the Steam Deck, a 1080p 120Hz display along with solid build quality and accurate controls, it's still hard to beat today. At least until the One X Fly F1 Pro is available with its Ryzen AI 370HX and 16 compute units of RDNA 3.5. I'm guessing you'll see a review of that coming up on this channel before too long. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Blue Sky at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description and makes everything that you see possible. And that's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Here for today is from Black Raven Brewing up in Woodenville, Washington, and I will admit I bought this simply for the can art. This is the Mecca Raven Double IPA, clocking in at 8%. So the Black Raven Mecca Raven IPA. Uh, I like this beer. I like this one a lot. All right, so the Black Raven Mecca Raven IPA. I have really been enjoying this one. Uh, the interesting thing is, for as heavy as an IPA as this is, and it's an 8%, it's hitting above its weight, even at 8%. Uh, you could tell me this was probably 10% and I would I would believe you. Uh, is the nose is almost invisible. It's almost like a, a real light pilsner on the nose. It gives no indication of, of the body of this beer that lies underneath it. As far as the flavor goes, it's not overly hoppy, but it is, it's very earthy. It's very rich, thick, full-bodied. Uh, definitely a beer that you feel like chewing while you're drinking it. It's also got this wonderful balance of, it's a little bit sweet and a little bit bitter. This is not the right flavor, but it's kind of the same thing of like a, a honey roasted peanut. You got a little bit of sugar with a little bit of peanut sourness on the back of it. It's kind of that same just off-center in each direction dynamic going on in this beer. And also, while it is a a thicker double IPA, those style of beers tend to be very drying. They, like, suck moisture out of your mouth. This one's not leaving me like that. This one, it, it's it's bitter, but it's not it's not drying. It's, it's not a dry beer. This one would go excellent with some food pairings with it. Uh, think of, like, a... A, a good plate of fish and chips or a, a nice hearty burger or something like that. Yeah, now I'm hungry.